Hello, hello everyone. Ah, I'm so excited to have you guys here on the third episode of Here to Help. Uh, tell us, where are you guys joining us from? I hope you guys are joining us from Behance, for sure. And if you're not in Behance, <laughs> come and join us from there because that's where the cool kids hang out. So, come, comment, tell us what you guys are doing, what you guys had for breakfast. No. <laughs> and, so for those of you who are new here, Here to Help is an Adobe Live special where two designers work together to help a business in need that has been affected by the crazy turn of events this world has taken lately. So it's it's really uh, it's like we're working on a real client, so it's, it's really fun and I hope you guys are going to join and like enjoy as much as we will. Today... I am super excited to have an awesome designer and now a friend of mine, Joyce Vaca. Joyce, how are you? I'm good. I'm excited to be on. This is new, so yay! First time for everything. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. I, I am going to let Joyce introduce herself and welcome us to her amazing work. But before that, let me just run a couple of housekeeping stuff. So the schedule for today has been packed like every day. Really cool things happening. Right now, we are doing the branding and design, uh, branding and identity design stream here to help special. At two, we have the XD Daily Creative Challenge, then 2.30, the draw along, and the day is gonna end with the design off between Voodoo Val and Selena Saldivar. So don't miss that. Um, it's gonna be really fun. Today, um, we're not gonna have a Daily Creative Challenge review, and I apologize for that. We really need to make the best of, of a really short time <laughs> to make an identity. So we're, we're gonna skip that, but you guys, please feel free to DM me. Um, my Instagram is only child design with only one D between child and design. If you guys wanna want, want any feedback, or whatever i i always love to to do that so please feel free to to do that and now to the most important thing joyce tell us how are you tell us a little bit about you your your design background your studio Joe's studio and anything the kind of work you like to do yeah um so i'm joyce I am based in England, uh, in Norfolk, which is on the East Coast. Um, and I run a small design studio um, called Joseph Hall Trades. Um, I studied design for publishing um, before I got into branding. So my work is really based around storytelling, making sure that everything kind of falls through in um, the identity far beyond the logo. So you can see some of my work here. I really like working with um, artisans, makers, people who like make the world a more beautiful place. That's kind of like one of my main aims. Um, you can see I've worked on exhibition catalogs. I've worked on local travel guides. Um, I've also helped photographers and other creatives with their branding needs. Um, and recently we've just done this really cool project for an elopement planner, which is really up and coming here in England because um, you can't really get married with um, bigger amounts of people. So elopements is where it's at. So it's been really fun working on this this year. Um, we kind of worked through the strategy, helped her think through what she's about and then help her get an identity around that that's 
really representing who she is and feels aligned with who she is. So yeah, so this is um, my Behance. You can go check that out and look more into it. Um, I've also got Instagram. So joat.studio instead of Joseph or Trace because it's really long. Um, you can kind of see what we're up to. You can see I'm really into typography. Um, and I really like working with loads of quirky little fonts. Um, we're gonna talk about fonts a lot more in this episode, I am sure. And yeah, and so I basically just work under the motto, like good design for good people. So either my clients have like a social impact or like their schools, organizations, churches, or I work on, um, yeah, local small businesses at the moment. So yeah, that's me. But have you got any questions, Lena, that you want me to cover? Oh my God, so many. And I'm <laughs> going to cover them all through the episode. Um, but that's a great intro. I, you know that I've always loved your your work. I think that we actually kind of started our studios at the same time. And I remember like oh, really? putting things like at the same. So it's it's really, really cool to see where you've come from since you started because I like I remember I follow you from your po first post so oh my gosh just so fun a an awesome journey seeing your growth and yeah you know, to have you here finally being oh it's such a dream <laughs> you guys um go follow Joyce please she has some really good content that she puts out so um, go follow her at Jot Studios. Go follow me at Only Child Design. And oh, by the way, I just posted I, for those of you who were here last here to help. I just posted what we did with Adina. So if you guys want to check out what we did, and if you didn't see the episode, you can get an idea of what we're going to be doing today. And talking about that today, we are working with. A soup. Well, for those of you just joining again, um, Here to Help is a special edition of this live that we actually work on a real client. So it's a little bit different because we do have it's a very restricted time and we do have a client that's giving us feedback, which by the way, she just joined in the chat, Daphne Bruce, hey, Daphne. for joining us. Um, we're going to be working uh, for Daphne today. She is, I, I really love her story. She, she is an interior designer, very talented interior designer who used to work for Airbnb and then she had a baby and you know, things happen when you have a baby, <laughs> things get crazy. She obviously had to take some maternity leave and, and that's exactly when COVID hit. So. COVID hit, Airbnb, obviously one of the very affected industries. It, she ended up losing her job there and now is looking for a way to reinvent herself. And she has this really cool idea of a retail, a, an online store for, for home goods, but that are classified in tiers. So basically, and this is the name of the store, it's called Good, Better, Best. And you have um, the products that are, so let's say you want to buy a cup or a mug and you go there, you look for mugs, you're going to have your good, your better and your best. The better it's like all of these products are top of the line and really high quality, beautiful design, but the good, it's a little bit more affordable than the best. So that you would buy for like a, like if you had an, a, a rental house that you still want to get good quality, but you know that mug might get broken by one of the people coming in. You might not want to get the most expensive one, so you get that one. But if you're buying something for, for a friend or for your mom or your mother-in-law, depending on how well you get along with them, you can buy the best of the line. So she basically curates your entire, like everything that you need. And I think that's genius because I personally need that in my life. Don't you, Joyce? Yeah. <laughs> it's like everything's really good, really easy. But so that's that's what we're going to be working on. Uh, we're going to be doing these two days of live. We're going to be developing the branding 
for her. So logo design, brand guidelines, and we're gonna do some um, brand applications tomorrow. But anything that I'm forgetting, I'm sure I always forget things. Joyce, anything else that you wanna tell us about, about um, Daphne or GBV that I missed? No, I think you covered it pretty good. Okay, so that's what we're gonna be working on today, guys. And you can also go and, and check them out is at GBB Home. G yeah, GBB Home. So you um, can also get an idea of what the store is is about. Right now they're in, in beginning process, so there's no real branding, but we're gonna do that today. So, um, and thank you guys so much for joining us in the chat. I'm seeing all your, all your love. A lot of people saying that you have beautiful work, Joyce. Thanks. We have friends from all over the world, from India, Nigeria, Texas, Sweden, Honduras, Argentina, Seattle, Netherlands. So thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, Peter, to your question, yes, this is a two hours event. We're gonna be live today uh, for two hours and tomorrow for other two hours. So uh, make sure to, to tune in tomorrow too. Um, so, now that we know what we're doing, <laughs> yes. Joyce. Um, so, full disclosure, guys, Joyce and I have been working <laughs> on this <laughs> for about a week now. We have had some back and forth with, with Daphne already, and we've had two calls with her, and we've been sharing like an overall general direction for, for this project. Um, this, I, so when we were working together, we, Joyce proposed that we did a stylescape. And I was like, what is a stylescape? <laughs> <laughs> that is, but let's do it. And, and she, she walked me through that process and through what those are. And I think those are really valuable. And at least they came out to be really valuable for me. So, I wanted Joyce to to explain to you guys to a, a little bit about those and the the process and how she does them because because I really got a lot from those. Um, so if you don't know what a stylescape is, don't worry. I have been in design for twelve years and I didn't know what they were, <laughs> so don't feel hopeless. <laughs> um, and but but if you do. Tell us in the comments if you do you use them? Do you know what they are? Have you have you worked with them before? What do you think of them? Let us know. And Joyce, mm. let us know. <laughs> yes. Do you want me to reveal what we've done so far? Please. Do, 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 do. Drum rolls, please. So basically, um, the stylescape isn't my idea. Um, I was introduced to the idea through the future, which I found on YouTube. I um, really recommend watching their videos on it. I'm, I'm gonna give my two cents, but obviously I'm not the one who came up with it or developed the idea. So I'm probably gonna leave out a lot of stuff. But basically um, when we started the project, um, Daphne's idea is great. And it also is very extensive <laughs> um, to say the least. Um, I think she's amazing. She's got such such a big vision for where she's going with it. And so I thought, well, actually better than just getting a bit of a mood board, which is visual references collected um, to get your project started and talk to the client about, um, I thought maybe we could try out Stylescapes because it would help us as we didn't have like a massive um, strategy document, which I do recommend in a normal process, but this is obviously a special episode. Um, so with the Stylescape, we kind of yeah i see some people asking if it's like a mood board it kind of is but not um so i like to look at it more as a bit more of an evolved version of a mood board so you can just um use um different elements that go into visual identity and bring them together and see if a, if it's coming together for you and like getting into that world of your client, bringing in the story, everything that you discuss with them into a visual piece. You can also try two, three different routes 
that are like quite different from each other and see which one they connect with the most. So the benefit of this is they will already see a lot more of how the typography will interact with um, graphics and photography and everything. And so it gives them a quicker feel of I'm into this or I don't connect with it um, or it's not what we're going for. It's not what the strategy is about. Um, so instead of like going down with one mood board and then starting to really design stuff and then going back to the client and realizing this is not what we're trying to do at all, this kind of helps alleviate some of that pressure, I find. So with Daphne, we had two different um, directions. One was more minimalist, um, clean, kind of that Swiss grid um, approach. And then we had one that was a bit more organic, but also luxurious, um, more textured. So Daphne chose the organic luxury route, as we called it. And you can kind of see it here. And I just want to talk you through the different elements of a stylescape. So um, we bring together pieces of graphic design, um, typography, photography, and you can already start kind of choosing photography that you feel like relates art direction wise to that direction that you're trying to um, envision. Um, gives gives them a really good sense and also gives you a good sense and like gets you into that headspace of what that world of the like of the brand identity could look like because it's more than a logo it's like how it feels how the imagery and the textures and the patterns kind of fit together so you can really quickly um comp up and um, bring in different patterns in see if that works or maybe it was great in your head but then you try it and it doesn't work at all so you can kind of eliminate stuff quite quickly um, and then we also, so we have textures in here. You can also use patterns if it's relevant for your project. You can um, use project relevant examples. So in this case, we have this um, shop over here, like an interior shop. Obviously, Daphne's going to start online. But even so, we wanted to give it a sense of like, if it was a physical shop, what it would feel like. So it could be physical space, if it's a restaurant or um, a shop, or a cafe or a gym or something like that. You can maybe look at interior design as well, bring that in and see how that would flow into there. Um, you can also start maybe editing some of the colors in the photos to match the color scheme that you're going for. Um, you can bring in color schemes, you can show UX, UI examples that you feel like are relevant to that direction. You can experiment with illustration styles, you can drop in an illustration from someone that you really like, for example, and see does it actually work with the direction I'm going for, or do I really like the illustration style, but it actually doesn't work for the direction. Um, and the other thing I really like about this is you can start bringing in some of the messaging. So you experiment with some of your favorite typefaces and stuff or like what you feel like is the most suitable and you can start seeing how it looks when you start typing out relevant copy to them and it, it just makes it feel more real a lot quicker. Um, so yeah, it helps you kind of make decisions at a really top level really quickly before you get like really into one logo and you fall in love with it and then turns out it's not the right fit. So that's kind of a quick fly through, um, yeah. Lena, do you have any questions? <laughs> no, I, I really, I, I mean, like I said, I really got a lot of value out of this and because I used to work more with, with mood boards. And I actually, all the projects that I've started after we started working together, I've started doing more stylescapes because it does help you get the whole idea of where the entire project can go. And it's not only like a preliminary mood that might work for a logo, but then you don't know like once your logo is done, where you're taking it. So it helps you, like you say, like mm. all of it from the beginning. So that's yeah. super helpful. And also it was quite interesting. So you can see that little call out box here. This is actually from our um, modern, like minimalist direction but I actually definitely really like that. And she's like, this is a really good idea. I want to keep that. And so it's not just the stylescape, but actually the conversation with the client that comes out of the stylescape, because they can start putting words to things like, I like this or this doesn't work for me because of X, Y, and Z. So in our previous stylescapes, there was typo typography and then stuff that she didn't like at all. And we got some really helpful feedback out of that. So now we're going to avoid certain typefaces with certain qualities because we realize that that's not what she envisions. So it, just a conversation around it as well is as valuable as the stylescape itself. So it just helps talking about things when you can actually point at things and discuss things from a, like, from a common ground. Um, and also wanted to show you, this is like the final thing, but this is what it looked like for us 
as we were putting it together. I just want to show you um, all of this. So it's really messy. I hope there's some encouragement to someone because yeah, my, my stuff never looks that clean. It always like explodes over the board at some point. Oh, and the one other thing I wanted to mention is like we brought in her um, dream clients and her like um, user profiles into the um, style skip as well which is really good for the designer because once you find images that relate to the strategy and who they're going after it makes you like remind it, it kind of reminds you as you're designing around them if it fits if it if it gels or if it's like off with um who you're talking to so i find that really helpful as well yeah i i did too and another cool thing about these is a, the horizontal. We we didn't see it like that because we were looking at the whole thing on the screen. But the the horizontal format also, when you put that full screen, it like kind of makes you scroll and yeah, kind of tells a story. And or it's like a little because sometimes like a mood board you have to take in all at once, which is good because you see how the entire brand lives together. So but then you, you can yeah. also digest like piece by piece, which I think that's really, really cool too. <laughs> like yeah, there we go. Jotima would say, it's a beautiful mess. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, and Uma Korn is asking us about the typeface that we're using. It, yes. That typeface that says a uh, fast folk, which is actually the one that we're using on the, on the header, that's called Gallery Modern. And it's a really cool typeface. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I really like where it's going. I think it looks really elegant <laughs> and kind of modern and has a little bit of personality. Yes. And another cool thing that, that Joyce taught me with these is when you put it together, always leave everything in there. Because I'm, I'm like, I'm a very messy designer, but then I get like, I throw out everything. I'm like, oh, no, this, I'm just like going to take it out so it's not too messy. But leaving the stuff in there really helps because as mm -hmm. you find and as you think of the uh, steps forward, you can get also inspiration from them. So really cool. Yeah, for sure. Really cool thing too. And it feels more like play, you know, like you're intuitively interacting with the brand and you kind of like, yeah, it's not just one logical step after the other and it's all in boxes, but it's, it's more intuitive. So something worked. And then the direction changes and actually something else that you saved already, then all of a sudden starts to make sense. So you start switching out things and you go back and forth. So yeah, I recommend keeping everything, even though it's messy, but I think it's kind of fun. <laughs> yes, yes, it's definitely, definitely a fun, beautiful mess. <laughs> um, so so yeah, that, that was our first step, working on those two directions, then sending those to Daphne. We had a call with her. She liked uh, this one better, but with a lot of the elements of the other incorporated. So we worked on refining these, and this is the final one that we came up with. And what we're gonna do now, we're gonna jump into logo creation. Yes. And Joyce is gonna lead us through her- Oh gosh. Ad, which I'm excited to see. <laughs> Okay, so full disclosure, I don't do logos in two hours. So I mean, <laughs> this is not this is not um, usually how it goes. So we're probably going to be polishing stuff after we're off air as well. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show you guys what I prepared to kind of keep me on track because you can you know already that I get really messy on my boards, but that's why I like having some sort of like going back to place somewhere on my board that I can land back on and like remind myself. Um, so. I break it down into these four boards out of the stylescape directly taken. So one is the concept then visual references, which is kind of more what um, the mood board um, approach is. I think I pull out the ones that out of the conversation with Daphne were like the most relevant. I felt like would be most useful to like reference art direction. So the photography, I find especially when you work with a project like Daphne's where there's all the product photography or um, just a lot of lifestyle in it. And the brand is more of a, like um, a container for that. So a shop, for example, we have 
loads of different goods from different places with different branding and stuff. Um, the design tends to be a bit more simple and more accommodating for all these different styles. But the photography itself is where a lot of the messaging happens visually. So that's why I like to have that like front and center. Um, so it's not just the graphics that we make, but actually the photography that goes with it. Um, so in our case, it's going to be about making the object, the product that she sells and um, that she's curated um, as like almost like a piece of art treat it like that and so the photography is going to be in a way that makes it feel like a piece of art that gets um, highlighted so the whole styling around it makes it feel like a center stage piece of art and then also um the colors are like there's a lot of natural raw texture in the photography itself like play of light um tactile like it's very sensory so when you look at this um duvet you can like really feel like it's like a lazy sunday morning or just the light dappling over here so because another thing that daphne mentioned is that she wanted to feel like connected she wants people to feel really connected through it like the whole idea of reducing the amount of products and having that curated space that makes it easy for you to decide is that you feel more connected to what you buy and your home so you want that to be in the photography as well I think just that like when people come on her website it's like this like zen kind of experience so everything becomes a bit simpler and a bit calmer um so the concept I highlighted different things out of our um conversations with her so curated and um, the three tiers concept of good better best and um, how everything's split into those three categories um she's really supportive of craftsmanship and artisans in general so um which we haven't mentioned up to this point but she actually wants to support um crafts like and artisan communities around the world um that maybe are like not <laughs> dying is a brutal word i'm like craft that's getting lost you know like um craft that was really um big and important to certain cultures and communities and now isn't anymore because of how the, like just how things have developed so um the funds that she's looking into supporting are gonna help um secure that legacy and and that that art form so that's another thing I thought was quite interesting um and the other thing is that she wants to make good design accessible so it's about making things simpler. It's about making things easy to understand. Um, she said that she explains design to people and it clicks. So I think I want a bit of that in there as well. And then, yeah, and then the tone is really important too. So these are the words I kind of picked out from conver conversation so far. So aspirational, but also approachable, artisan and soulful, sh chic, uh, chic and modern, thoughtful and kind practical and simple and fun and inspiring and then yeah so that kind of is the references I landed on so I'm going for that gallery look but fun shapes really interesting textures so that's where we're starting and yeah yeah so it's so exciting let's see. and then this is from like what what we've prepared in the stylescape that's like Lena's shapes from the stylescape so I pulled them over um <laughs> Yeah, shall we jump into fonts? Let's do it. Because I can. Queen of fonts, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea. Like we were working on this project and I we would see like a tiny font in like maybe like the body copy of, <laughs> of something. And then we'll be like, oh, that's cool. 20 minutes later, <laughs> Joyce is like, I found a font. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's here here's the link to it <laughs> like she has like this amazing font radar so yeah <laughs> i love fonts some of her insights in this episode <laughs> oh my goodness yeah i'm a bit of a font nerd for sure um <laughs> i can't make fonts to save my life but i just so appreciate how different every font is and the different personalities that come through. And I think if you have like a really good font, you don't need to make up with loads of graphics for it because the font already speaks volumes. So that's just kind of my approach. Um, so which it also brings me to the font that has been mentioned in the chat, which is a good, better, best here. Um, 
And also I keep calling it fast folk. It's not, it's just the example that we used. It's gallery modern, did you say? Gallery modern, yeah. yeah. So Daphne loved this one and I can appreciate the shape of it too, but I was concerned that like the fluffy L, that that like, um, like curve the other way. So it works really well here with the F and the L, but I was concerned that if we're gonna use it across the whole website, it's gonna A, get old um because it's kind of like such an unusual shape that if you keep repeating it it becomes like I don't want to say boring because that's not it's not a boring font at all it's a very exciting font but it's almost like it doesn't work well on a repeated large scale because this is in like a small artisan boutique um where we just have like one sign painted out and a couple of flyers that go out but it actually is going to be a website that is designed to scale and be quite large, I, I felt like it wasn't quite up to the task, that specific font. So this is something that I think is really important to consider is like, where is the project going? And is the font gonna be able to keep up with it? Um, there's loads of great fonts in the font, but then when you start looking into the kerning, it's really off. And so when you set a whole paragraph in that free font, it doesn't look good. It just looks choppy and all over the place, whereas a font that's been designed by someone who's spent loads of time on like all the negative space and stuff you know it will look good and like pleasing to the eye when you have like loads of text in that font so that's one thing to consider so that's why i really like going on adobe fonts because you get all these like really good fonts for free which i think is incredible well for free it's not free but we get access to them for free so <laughs> for the sake of the argument yeah it's really good for the budget um <laughs> and yes so here is all the fonts I've been looking at and um, that I felt like have some sort of relevance to the project some more than others um Lena which one was your favorite oh my god I have so many <laughs> <laughs> um which one was my I really liked um what was the name uh, it was a French French Gascon Gascon. Oh yes. I like yes. Yeah, I like Gascon. I like um I think that one was one of the of the ones I like. But th there were so many that I Oh gosh, yeah. I found a whole new load of fonts to this project, which <laughs> made me so happy. It felt like Christmas. <laughs> and voyage, it's always like Oh um, yeah. It's like the the perfect font. But it's so classy. Definitely like a thing of itself too so yes so I actually used voyage for my recent project the one with the elopement planner and it's gorgeous yeah. um with her it was actually because i feel like it kind of reminds me of like the old um gaelic type form like letter forms and stuff um but okay so we have all these fonts now what do you do how do you choose fonts when, when you have like a million fonts on your screen and this isn't even the whole collection this is like edited down for the sake of the live stream <laughs> um so one thing now this is why this is important I, I went back to this and I looked at aspirational and approachable and artisan soulful when I think of artisan soulful I want a font that has a bit of an edge to it something that's unique like a little quirk um again same thing with chic and modern um I want it to be feel fresh. I don't want it to be too old. I didn't want it to feel like a retro. Like, I didn't want it to be retro, first of all. And I didn't want it to feel like an old book font, if that makes sense. Like, So I, I want to feel quite fresh and on the forefront. But also the practical and simple meant I wanted to definitely pair it at least with a secondary font that's quite clean, sans serif, make it, make it more... Um, I get like easy to read, um, but also uh, I, when I think of practical and simple and breaking down concepts and making them clear, I think of infographics, I think of um, breaking things down, like deconstructing them. So sense I, I felt felt really relevant for that. Um, and then fun and inspiring. It's like, okay, in the headlines, we could do something more quirky. Um, so like you said, there's a couple of different fonts I felt fit the bill. But then through conversations with Daphne, I realized that she doesn't really like really um, cut edges like here in Agentur. This font here doesn't quite, it was too edgy. Um, 
And so I was like, okay, that's good to know. So then I, I thought, well, if she wants to come across kind and thoughtful, maybe a soft, like rounded, rounded font will be better. So we looked at like these edges here are so different to this is really pointy. Um, and so we ended up with this font here that you just mentioned. And I think that font has a really beautiful, it has a classic feel to it, but it also has like a bit of volume and curves in it and a bit of life, a bit of body. Um, really also very inviting and friendly too. Yes. It feels and, classic, yeah. but, but still like nice. <laughs> yes. So, okay. And that therein ends the lesson of what we have done so far. Um, and we're going to start. And um, so, like you just said, I do usually write out all the words like um, this over here. So you can see them in camel case, lower case and upper case, just because sometimes the shapes change. And with the good, better, best as well, it was... Um, the gallery font looked a certain way when you look at this image, but then when you start typing out your own word, um, especially for a logo, it might feel very different because of the different letter forms that you're using. So that's something to consider as well. Um, and the other thing I always look out for is if there's different weights and if it's italics as well. Um, if you have one fancy font like Voyage, but there is no like italics and stuff, you'll have to make up for it with a different font because at some point down the line, you'll probably need those styles. Um, so yeah, all the type considerations that go into it. So I like this one. And the other one that I thought was quite relevant was this one here, Og, which is all the rage at the moment in the design community. It's really interesting because you have this, um, different italic um, which has more of a calligraphy feel to it mm. um, so it could be quite interesting to break up stuff without having, having to leave the type family um, so the first thing that came to mind was so it's just at the beginning it's just loads of exploration without like really quick I'm just going to jump in a Mallory is asking us mm. what where did these fonts came from? And these are a collection between Adobe fonts, free fonts, purchased fonts. It, it was from all over the place. <laughs> mm, yes. So I have this great little app, um, Chrome extension called What Font. And basically, so if you scroll the web and you look around, you can then use that little extension to like hover over the whole website and read what font files they are. Um, that's kind of one of the most important tools that I've had so far to like learn about new fonts. Um, I really recommend it. And then I think Type Wolf, Lena, you're an avid representative. <laughs> that, that's my, my, my most valuable tool. <laughs> I, um, yeah, I love using Type Wolf to find the Adobe alternatives for fonts. Mm. And yes, I think so I'm good. I, I can, I can show really quick how I, how I do that Go for it. Really, really valuable for, for me. And, and if you guys haven't seen the past streams, cause I talk about this, like every single stream, um, I, I'm going to show you guys uh, what I mean with that feature. Let me just share my screen really quick. So you guys can, um, see what I mean with that and right here so um this is a um, type wolf they just like it's a blog that talks about everything that's trending in type and they feature a different website each day always like really really cool um websites and typography so uh, let's say you like a font and I, for example, my, my favorite font, which is a font that I use for my branding is a uh, called Recoleta. So what I always do, I just like Recoleta font type wolf, and then I'm going to get into directly to their, oh, no, sorry, uh, here, directly into their 
their thing, right? So here's the font. You can you have a link to get the font. You have some some pairings of the font. Uh, some fonts that go, go well with it. But also the most valuable tool is you get the closest match on Adobe fonts. So you and here we have a P22 Mackinac. So you get a font that is similar, but for free with your Adobe subscription. So that's like, this comes really handy, especially when you have a client that might not have a big budget for fonts. It's really good to find alternatives. So that was the quick commercial break. <laughs> I'm in no way sponsored by Type Wolf, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I just oh, bless him. <laughs> he does a great work, though. I think I read up a little bit on him, and I think it's amazing that he puts all of that out for free. I feel like he's influenced so many designers around the world, and it's free. So I think he deserves a bit of extra recognition. <laughs> yes, yes, he's amazing. This is also um, on a font that I personally love. It's called Coconut, and I really like like the extended version. I don't think it's what we're going for in this project, though, so I had to like let it go, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, someone mentioned that they really love this ligature. Like, I do too. And actually, this is something that reminded me of the gallery font that we used at the beginning. That's like taking inspiration from there. So I'm trying to like find fonts that have a similar quality. Um, I really like this somehow. I just think there's something really pleasing in the way it sits and the difference between the italics and the normal one. I think it's also really elegant. It has, I think it's definitely more on the aspirational side. Mm -hmm. Not so approachable, more aspirational. It's like, I'm pretty, look at me, but don't touch me. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> <laughs> the other the challenge I'm having with good better best is just the um the difference in length of the words so that that won't work mm, what's happening here um that won't work so much just because like this is a six letter word these are four and four which is great if you have mono spaced so Um, let me just move this. But with a, any font that's not monospace, which means that they're equal width, um, you don't really get like, so the good and the best are the same length in this font here in particular, just because they're the same um, amount of letters. But as soon as you switch into a more organic, um, like a serif or any th other typeface, really, it starts to like look really different. So like the O's could be really wide. And so then good is massively long and then best is really short. So that's kind of what I'm trying to avoid at the moment. I think that looks pretty balanced to me. So I'm going to keep that. And then the other font that we wanted to play with is... Like I said, I'm more of a minimalist when it comes to logos. I believe in the whole package. Um, so sometimes the logo will be quite simple, um, but it's all about like editing the shapes down to what you want it to look like. Um, and since we're talking fonts, guys, tell us what your favorite Adobe font is, please. I've, I've been wanting to do like a little post for with like favorite Adobe fonts. And I do have a, a bunch of them that I love, but tell us which ones are your favorites. I'm curious to know which one is your favorite. Joyce, do you have? Yeah, I do have one at the beginning. At the moment is definitely Gopher. Mm -hmm. um, I love that one. So nice. Yeah. It, it is so like neutral, but also it's got so much personality. It's great. It works really well. Um. So this is our more friendly version. Um, so at the moment, I'm just learning how the shapes sit together, learning the words. I'm kind of, I wanna, let's see. Let's, what happens if I do this? 
Peter is suggesting making the words different sizes. That okay. Can... Yeah, we can try that. Which one do you think should be bigger than the other ones? Best. <laughs> best. Yeah. <laughs> Better best. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. Well, we we totally try it. Which one should we go for? Should we try this here? So we could. I'm gonna outline it for the sake of trying it so far. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we could. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> that is one way of doing it. Best. <laughs> yes. Um, the problem that I'm having with that approach is just, and this is where the conceptual comes in. I'm trying to communicate concept through type. They're all equal in value for different reasons so i don't really want to i don't want people to look at me and think oh the brand's called best with like a sub subtext oh what's happening here but i mean i could oh playful nope too far <laughs> um you could like do like a playful thing like this um what i haven't tried actually is Let's see. This is really fun. I also apologize if I have a screen face. That <laughs> does happen. Uh, okay. Oh, no, we're getting some really good recommendations on fonts. Thank you, guys. You're getting Lost, Span, Poppins, da Dido, Dido. I don't. I never know how to say that. But <laughs> I'm like, should we go French, Spanish, eh, Arpo, Arpona? That one, I'm going to go with Spanish. <laughs> mm. Like, I don't know what I would do without Proxima Nova. <laughs> oh, yeah. So. You guys, keep telling us. What else do you like in there? Interesting. Um. Yeah, I love type on a path. It's like, I think my favorite feature. <laughs> a game changer. Yes. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Right, so, okay, this is interesting. Maybe not as the main mark, but I think it's always good to have like something that represents mm -hmm. like a label. So because of this being an artisan product, this um, this is like an idea way down the line, but as I'm having it, I'm doing it right now. So let's say you have, uh, let's go with something. Also, oh, this is another favorite of mine is Acumen. It has a really, it's really elegant. It's actually really expensive if you buy it on your own. So I couldn't believe it when I found it on Adobe. Um, it has a really clean, like modern look to it. Um, it reminds me of like brands like Acne. Um, but you not just that, but you get like a million different widths and weights, which is incredible. So you could try, like you can fit it around your project however you want, which is great. So yeah, all caps always means loads of tracking <laughs> <laughs> um so this is just a thought lena that i'm having so because we're trying to do artisan products and you know um the best section is probably going to be products that no actually definitely did say it's like one-offs or there's only five of them and then once they're gone they're gone um so you know when you get like a fine artist print so i'm taking a lot of inspiration from fine art because this is kind of what it is it's it's art isn't it um but an object that you can have in your house so when you go to fine art print there is this little type treatment where there's like if it's a there's 15 prints of them there will be one out of 15 number two out of 15 number three out of 15 so creating that luxury feel through like how um exclusive it is and how like how few um products they are of that kind um so i think something like that could be really interesting to put on um products or something further down the line love it so i think this is quite interesting here i like this 
as a little mark as a symbol. Um, also, Daphne said she wants to stick with the GBB. Um, what I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna shorten this and see what happens. Oh yeah, I have mine set to like a really small amount. So it doesn't really move, but ooh. Okay. So I'm gonna follow that curve up and then land in this other B. Um, the other challenge with this brand I'm finding is that we have two Bs signifying two different layers of quality. If it was like good, better, ex excellent or exquisite, then it will be GBE. So then you have three different letters and then whenever there's an E, it will be like the highest quality. So that is one thing I've been thinking about. And I was wondering if we could use the asterisk as a, oh, hello as our means to show that. And I quite like this actually in Acumen. It has that like modern feel to it. Like I said, I will combine it with like a more pers like a personable soft font. But the idea of like the asterisk is like the um, standout, you know, like you've got an A and then you've got an A star. <laughs> um, so I'm trying to find typography. Um, ooh, someone just, but do you have that font, um, Circe, Lina? I don't think so. No, let me see. Oh, but it's an Adobe font. <laughs> oh yes. Okay, perfect. Um, let me. Yeah, let me get that. So, um, someone just asked about a uh, Peter. No colors. Black is boring. Black <laughs> is not boring, first of all. But um, also that aside, um. The reason being is because it's a mark. We're not talking about the identity here. We're not talking colors. We did touch on that in the stylescape, but the mark needs to work in black and white, in white alone, like like on a photo or something as a watermark. Um, it needs to work in so many different ways. So I think for me, the way I design logos and how I find it practical is they always need to work in black and white. And then you can add colors and you can add other elements around them and stuff. But I think the core should always be black and white so you can adapt you know, to the surroundings because the logo is going to live on loads of different things. Um, so yeah, that is my reasoning for it. And also don't forget that this brand is going to sit with photography, um, a load of product photography, loads of like lifestyle and like all of that. So mm -hmm. you want to make sure that the logo doesn't stick out color wise to the photography of that collection of that particular year, for example, you, you want to make sure that you can adapt. So if it's dependent on a color, you're going to struggle to change it later is, is my, is my approach, but like not everyone does the same. And also not every brand requires the same consideration. So for this brand, I think it's relevant. Um, but yeah, for another brand, maybe not so much. I love the comments. Black does have a fan club. Everyone's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> black is we love black black is life no no i i agree i i love black but also um 100 agree with you i feel that logos should unless there's something that you have like you know you have to have a detail in in a pop color you can definitely try that but your logo should always work in black and white because otherwise yeah. you don't have a logo you have a beautiful graphic, but <laughs> yeah, totally. It's just that like making sure that it serves the client long-term, like you don't want them to have to change the logo in like two months, <laughs> probably not two months. That would be really ambitious, but I made it say like a year. I actually had someone reach out to me um, the other week and ask me, Hey, when do you recommend doing a rebrand? Like someone told me every two years, I was like, it definitely should not be every two years. If it's like, well done because you're investing into your brand you're paying good money for it you don't you don't want to be changing this every two years like that's that's a big expense um and less of an investment so i think you when you design for a client you are serving them and you need to consider them and their needs in the future you try and be as long term as possible which comes from the strategy session which i'm a big believer in um, yeah, otherwise you're just like an executing hand. Um, but you want to add that extra value as a designer. Um, ooh, this is kind of cool. I'm just playing with shapes here. Um, I think Voodoo will ask about editing fonts. I'm also like really scared sometimes to touch a font. Having said that, this is just a playground. So you can try whatever you want. 
Um, and then weed out everything you feel like isn't like edit it well enough, if that makes sense. I like playing with, so once you have the words for your brand, for your logo, for example, and they won't change, it makes sense to edit I wouldn't just squish the logo or something, but what I like to do is like extend certain like elements or shorten certain elements, or you could even cut off. And this is actually the next thing I'm going to try. Um, so I was wondering what would happen if, um, and again, this is like a lot quicker than actually editing. <laughs> um, when you, if you take, oh, hello. On group. When you put the two beasts together, obviously this looks like an eye. Does that's not going to work? But that's what I mean. You just try stuff and then you, like, mm, that's not a good idea. Um, but maybe if we use the two, it'll over v curves. If, if you give the V a little bit of space, so it's not only the, the, yeah, like you, you start Let's to try that. Maybe that will help. I'm not sure. Yeah, let's try this. Um, I'm I'm thinking it's still that. So the problem with this is the the most significant part of the bee is the the two bowls, like the the belly, so to speak. Yes. Yeah, so we're gonna do the other way around instead. Um, and okay, I need to switch this around for that. Lena, how do you edit type? What's your kind of approach? I, I feel like it's the same. Like the definitely when you're editing type, do not squish anything. Do not like try to yeah. you 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 want to keep the essence of the of the font. So you don't want to like it derail any like anything. You just um I, I do the same. Like I let's say if I want if I see two two if I'm stacking two letters and I feel like they might go very well together or like maybe the opposite maybe they're like clashing into each other and i want to take that a little bit out so things like that i do i i won't change a lot the font it's more like working with the essence of the font and tweaking it so that it fits well with the design hi julia julia is here so happy to see oh yay another here to help designer yes now we just need Adina and the whole gang is here. Where are you, Adina? <laughs> so. so that's kind of interesting. So, okay. So one thing I wanted to, after the first round of like just messing around with type that you feel like works for your project, this actually is cool because it's a three and it's three tiers. So there's that hidden meaning in there as well. Um, having said that, um, what I really want to do is want to play with the idea of the three tier system because that's what's really unique to her brand um so yeah so i want to kind of bring in that more because there will be other small curated goods shops but with her it's like the good better best so okay what can we do to like hone in on the thing that makes her her and sets her apart tells her story so when I think of lists, I think like, you know, shopping lists, like you've got those three. And um, by the way, the story is really interesting after this uh, behind Good, Better, Best. It's what she used to send out to, I think, Airbnb super hosts. Is that right, Daphne? <laughs> if you're watching, let us know. Um, so she would curate three different lists um, of home goods that she would suggest to them could work for you know, for their rental um, to buy and the best will be the most expensive and exclusive and the good will be um, the most affordable, but still like has a high aesthetic kind of value standard also like make because obviously Airbnb like you go there for like the interiors, right? You half of the game is like booking the Airbnb that you like being in. So it makes sense that they would curate that a lot more. So I, I quite like that because it's part of her story. It's how she got to the idea of creating this business in the first place. So I want to kind of pay some homage to that. And I did have a bit of research about how to show different lists, but honestly, there's not much 
there's not much variation like people kind of do lists all the same like it's always kind of tears like this um Oh, look, Julia. Julia's saying she's going to become a vaca soon because that's her husband's last name. So really? Oh, my God. <laughs> yes, I found another one. <laughs> that's amazing. That's so I just got married this summer. I only just became a vaca. So welcome to the club. <sighs> so, okay. Let's see. I'm thinking of like making maybe something that's more interesting in terms of shape and then one that's more of a minimalist mark. You know, you probably need both. One to show the concept a bit more and like set her apart and then one that works on like small things like website headers and things like that. So you have to... Oh, that was too much. I like a fine line. Joyce, is your is your husband Colombian by any chance? No, I think he's <laughs> English, but I think he's got Italian roots. So apparently, I've been told it comes from Italian. <laughs> Julia is asking. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> I oh, I see. Questions. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Is um is your fiance Colombian, Julia? Your husband is is Colombian. Oh, husband. Oh, sorry, I just got that completely <laughs> wrong. Um, I like, yeah, I like the list thing. And yeah, I, I like that idea. Because uh, you could also like, first, when I heard about the project, I was like, oh, we can do something boxy like this. I don't know. Like, oh, wait, like, let's keep them the same height. Um, and then put the words in there somehow I don't know because I just thought of, for some reason I thought that was a good idea but that never really made it because then maybe I'll revisit it um I don't yeah I think it's a bit complicated um and because she wants to be more of a friendly like elegant brand that didn't feel like a really boxy kind of architectural looking logo is kind of where we're sh should be going this is another thing I tried with the list like splitting it through slashes um or like straight lines down the middle um I do really like this like the ligatures are really nice where is it yeah how that connects so because you can easily make that more of a ligature so here because there's a very long tail on the e. <laughs> yes so, you're but, sorry julia is saying that you guys' last name means vaca it means vaca means it means cow yeah i know cow. how flattering is that it does mean cow but neither you look like cows so oh thank you don't worry <laughs> <laughs> I am glad to hear that. Um, so someone asked if I use Pathfinder. I don't at this point. Um, I only, because um, I find it more fiddly to join up stuff. So I just kind of block it out in white. And if I think the idea has anything to it and I want to explore it more, then I will start, you know, cutting stuff up and like. I do the same. It's yeah, cause... safe than sorry. <laughs> yeah, and it... it if you're just trying an idea that's not going to go anywhere you don't want to spend too much time on it because it you're going to get lost don't you i agree so and so these are all rough there's definitely no way i'm going to do like something really polished today <laughs> um oh that's where it went i see also if you get a well-made font you'd have to curl a bit less um which always helps <laughs> um yeah okay so i think that could be really elegant kind of that direction for the logo um with og it's almost like the typeface does the talking and less of like how smart i can manipulate it um a lot of the references that daphne actually showed us 
um, I went on their websites and stuff and all their logos are so simple. Um, it's a certain typeface, you know, tracked out, just there, done. Um, I do want to give this more personality than that. I quite like this. I want to see where we can go with this. It's just this negative space here. I mean, you could also... Yeah. No, that doesn't read like GBB anymore. You still want it to feel like GBB and it is not at the moment. Yeah, I I think there's something in this with the asterisk. Um, I like maybe too. Yeah, I think to communicate the idea really simply with this little fuss as possible because like I said it is a container brand for other brands it's not like a standalone brand in itself um I think minimal like minimal but clever is the key so I really like what's going on here so I'm thinking and I like the lower case of that fun it's really beautiful so I'm also thinking to use Acumen as a supporting font. So you could use both these. It can alternate depending on what you're doing. Um, I have sometimes when you get stuck, I have some taglines that she provided. So always seeing how that works. And also here, like, look at this, the black makes it so like grown up. I was talking to a friend about this project and I was like, how do we get Matisse, but not so childish? Um, like, um, but without, sorry, without looking childish because Matisse doesn't look childish. Um, and we were talking about this and I think it's a fun, like on this poster, um, you know, that kind of makes it more elevated and the black contrast with the shapes. And I know on his actual art, that isn't the case, but like when it becomes a graphic and a poster, I think that's how you make it stand out as something more adult and elegant, well, not adult and mature. Um, it's true. Let's see. Let's, what happens if... Yeah, I need to untrack that. <laughs> what are you doing, Lena, on your screen? Those, <laughs> I'm reading Voodoo's a uh, comment with... Uh, she says that one thing that the asterisk tells her brain, it's like, there's there's more, you know, how like, ooh, always goes to more information. So yes. that's that's a good a good thing to to keep in in mind, because, yes, there's more in that story. There is more. <laughs> <laughs> always more. Um, and it's like, like discovery almost maybe as well that we can play on. Yes. Do you... I'm doing, so I'm working from some of the shapes that we have. Mm -hmm. Actually, let me go. Do you want to show your screen? Yes, I'm going to go, go for it. And let me share it. Um, let's see. I always lose my button to, <laughs> to share the screen. Okay. Um, no, it's not here. Okay. So, screen sharing. Okay, so. Yeah. Okay, so um, much like like Joyce, I've been doing also some some font research. <laughs> and I, Look at that. We had I don't have that many <laughs> fonts. I I edited a lot out too um but but that's where i started and then i started exploring with with shapes and and obviously like full disclosure we started working on these a week ago so i do have some some things that i've worked um previously i did not do this in an hour talking to you guys yeah. <laughs> Ooh. so um one of the things that i one. Oh, actually, I'm gonna go to this one because um, because Yotirma was asking about what about an abstract shape that mm -hmm. we brand, and this is uh, 
a bundle of shapes that that Joyce did when when we were working on the on the on the stylescape and I really liked it so I I'm taking these shapes so it's like what if yes that looks good I like it some of the of the letters in there because I kind of like the idea of having both of these things like if I take mm -hmm. the, the shapes these could leave on its own for yeah. a little hint of the brand and then we have like the the entire the entire logo with the dvd that's that's something that i was i was trying um another thing that i liked was and this was again departing from from the shapes that we were thinking of um just like very very simple and mm. you outline to to see how this looks alone i like the idea of using a different shape for for each different um category because i can see the potential of of using them after on other applications like on the logo yeah. on the logo on the logo on the website or or in print where you have you already know that this little shape is for good this one's for mm. And no, this one's for better and this one's for best. And like you kind of can classify your your things on on, on there with those shapes. So that's um those are oh so this one is just like I'm just trying some type and and here you can actually see this is I think this might be a good um a good um, answer for for Boudou's past question where she asked how do we how do we modify text so this is an example of how I modified a font and let me actually put this side by side so so you guys can see a little better mm. so I have I, I had stacked the good better best here right and then when I go here, I see what's happening between the B and the O, and I'm not really digging that because it's like just like there, it's touching, but yeah, it's happening, like there's no space. But it's like you know, like sometimes when it's like little, like touching and going into it, it looks very good. Uh, but here, I feel like it's it doesn't feel purposeful so. What I did to the shape, I just uh, modified the B so that it like fits in this little triangle, and, but it gives it enough space and to, to breathe so that it feels like it's not uh, going into it. Uh, and then I just modified the other B so that they, they are consistent. So that's, um, that's where where my my thought process would, was going for for those um and then i'm looking at the comments this is so hard to multitask guys <laughs> <laughs> you're doing great which has helped me <laughs> to 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 do that but <laughs> um also just you might it likes the idea of the three shapes um where do we find fonts for logos? Adobe Fonts, for sure. It's a great resource. Um, and um, we, yeah, Adobe Fonts. Uh, I also did a, an example of how I use Type Wolf, which you can check at the beginning of the episode after in, in the replay. Um, let's see. Um, this here, I was just like trying some stacking with the fonts. Mm. In this one, I was going with the same. So for, I'm I'm going with the same font for of the, of these, uh, shape, driven one, but just making a seal like, mm -hmm. so did a seal. I think I, I I think we should definitely have a seal version for whatever we come up with. Don't yeah. you, Joyce? Yeah, hundred percent for sure. Um, and yeah. This is um, where I was going, and I think I'm gonna try some 
I love the shapes um, like that you've taken out of that pattern that we made. Because I was thinking like having a pattern for like the packaging and things like that, like an overarching. It's just so hard to know which shapes to include and which not to include sometimes because <laughs> you, <laughs> you're like, you want to give it a sense of like it all coming together. But then also you want to you want to play. Yes. Yes, it's but this thing that you did I really I really like. Yeah, that was really spontaneous just based of some of the shapes that you made because we didn't actually do logo design as such but we just played with that stylescape back and forth and that came out of there, didn't it? Yes. Yes, yes. This this came out of that. And then um oh, the last one that I did and that I I think it might be one of my I, I don't know. I'm still thinking. <laughs> Is, yes, I like that. So mm -hmm. this one was playing off of the idea. Well, we talked a lot about arches in our in our our back and forth and the stylescape. And I I love the idea of an arch for this brand. Obviously, like it gets you to to home, but it's like a friendly home and and it like it for me it's it's a really good shape to use on this so i was seeing um and this came from the from the concept joyce that you were you were just pointing out to the the box concept of like each mm. category it's kind of a box so i was like okay so what if i had arches in like little boxes and then i, I was like oh i i put this in to re to also be able to stack the text and and categorize it in tiers so that we have the good the better and the best and that's like kind of like the the podium where you like when you win at um at, at a sport that you have like the the yeah place and i I'm love it not accurate because it's usually the the winner in the middle but that's that's what i was i was going from for this one i yeah that's my favorite out of all of them like the only what do you think so because when we were talking about it originally it should start off as a home brand but then she wants to move beyond that potentially so do you think if we hone in because that was the reason why I went more typographic because I was worried if I create something too shape-based it it might struggle to then to fit then into different yeah to like expand into a different sector um, just because like it's like the home idea, isn't it? So, what do you think? Do you think that doesn't matter? Yeah, no, I I agree. I think that's something to to consider for sure. Um, I feel like maybe because it's abstract enough, it's not mm. much like it, it does take you to to home because like and and that's what we want it to do at the beginning. So that's fine. It's not like a home home that it will like forever <laughs> forever yeah. from anything else so but that's definitely a very important thing to consider also for for Daphne who's who's watching us so <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad that she's in the process because <laughs> now she can <laughs> she can like make a decision really quick <laughs> yeah. we have a day to complete this <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> Uh, how how are how are you feeling, Joyce, with this craziness? Have you ever done a, bra a complete branding? <laughs> I mean, I've in two days. Yeah, I'm definitely glad we're doing it together because I feel like it's much easier to have like two heads in it. <laughs> um, I I really like what you've done. What's that font there for the good, better, best? Or like it's a lowercase e. Well, it looks like a lowercase e. It's like kind of top right this quadrant nope other side right this one lower case no no you're almost there oh no just above that one down <laughs> yeah this one is called ak ah no kasan kasan mm. i think it's it was on the on the list that in this one it is ka is it not? No, it's not in here. Let's change. So let's change one of the ones that we know. 
we might not use. Okay, so it's it's called Kasan. Kasan. It's if anyone wants to go check this font out, it's called Kasan. There we go. <laughs> I like it works because it's so um quirky. Like you know that that's something that we were going for, like getting it a bit of personality. Yeah, I like it. I'm gonna um when I get out of my of my screen, I'm gonna put it in our in our folder. In our yeah, perfect. I use it too. Yeah, Peter, live branding is awesome, but it's so much pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally just so glad you're here. You're at least you're familiar with the process. I know, and 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 again, like I, I worked on this last night, and oh, the, okay, I feel better now. <laughs> I was not working right now on this, you guys. I came up with this <laughs> in two minutes. Talking to you guys on the chat, I, <laughs> um, no, <laughs> like that. Oh, that makes me feel better here in case someone wants to check out fonts because Julia says she's taking notes. So, oh, pressure <laughs> on, on fun. Yeah, no, so, it's a whole world. Do, do you, do you want to go um, back? I didn't. Oh, then now you keep going. I love looking at your screen. <laughs> I am enjoying what I'm seeing. It's just so nice to like be bouncing back and forth. Yeah, it's so much easier. Definitely having someone else that you can bounce ideas for it. Because I usually I I usually work on my own. And if yeah. I work with someone, it's always a copywriter or someone that doesn't do design. So I mean, and, and I all love that process of even like collaborating with a copywriter for for my design. Yeah, for sure. So, but I never collaborate with designers on on my work. It's always like so. It's so valuable for for me to to have this experience too, and be be able to to back and like to send things back and forth. Um, let's see. So this one was just done with um, Pathfinder. Mm -hmm. I like a hey, the Pathfinder, the type on a path. I love type on a path. Like I could use it in every single project that I do. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but I guess I was looking at a way of like really getting that, that good, better, best hierarchy because when I did it in, in a circle, it was just like the regular circle and it just yeah. like the way it is. But so I was trying to get good and then better and then best and trying to fit it into into a shape that would also be um, kind of nice. Um, let's see. Yeah, your voyage is beautiful. It's it's really really. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Um, it is becoming very popular, even though it's pretty expensive. <laughs> for, for, it is. I um, used it for um, my recent branding for LMA. And I was so pleased that she went with it because it was perfect for what her brand's about. Um, but it is like, I was nervous. I was like, this is um, what it costs. <laughs> the content won't work without the font. So uh, <laughs> how do you feel about it? And she was really gracious and really up for it. So really glad she had like this, the same vision for it and just fell in love with the brand. But it is something to consider when you want work with like smaller clients that they might not be able to afford that because when we were talking to Daphne as well, it's, it's not just a license for the logo mark. That's one thing. So you can maybe sh shell out the money for that. But then if you have a website um, that's going to sell to loads of people, then you have to check the licensing for that because the licensing might get more expensive the more people go on the website and you want to make sure that you give the typography, like the foundry, the um, credit that they're due and also the license that they're due. So it's things to consider, especially for like bigger brands. If it's like a small boutique brand, um, there's less... I guess pressure on that end, but if you're gonna like, be, if you're an e-commerce store, you really have to think about what fonts you're gonna use. 
or you have Google fonts to support on your website and Adobe fonts um, to link in. That's the other way of doing it. Yes, yes, that's that's definitely a, a concern of, of a lot of clients too. Like a lot of, because it's, I mean, us as designers, we're familiar with that. We know like you have to pay, but clients, and a lot of times they have no idea they have to pay for rights, for funds. <laughs> oh, absolutely, yeah. Is an extra cost one, yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, there is. And I, I, also, as as a designer and a freelancer or, or a company owner, it's really important to have those in your contract as well. So, and yeah. I have it in my contract, but I also have it in my proposals. Like I have a a, a little asterisk, <laughs> like the yeah, sign that says that um, that that the font cost is not associated to to the to the actual cost of the of the project that they have to pay that separately because that oh, that really depends and and I don't think you should account for that because as you know fonts vary greatly in price like you can find a $15 font you can find a free font you can find a $1000 font so <laughs> gosh yeah definitely tell your client like hey um this doesn't come in the price and you're going to have to to pay yeah. separately for sure And it just depends what kind of clients to work with as well. Um, if, you know, if they are willing to invest that money or not. Um, yeah, that's, but it's a lot of work that goes into making a font. So I think a lot of time people are like, what, it costs that much. I was like, actually, if you think about what it takes to make a font, like you're, you're paying for a lot of labor. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I love just because you can download it and it's a tiny file size doesn't mean it was a lot. There wasn't a lot of work. Yeah, have any of you guys in in the chat experienced with type design? And if you have, let us know and add the link so we can check it out too. I have personally never come close to designing a type, and I don't think I will ever. <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs> do it because it, like you said it's like it for me type design is another art it's like yeah I a, agree it, it's a skill that I do not I don't think I have I'm <laughs> florid when I'm in like my my I don't know my midlife crisis maybe I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good have you ever done any any type typography design Joyce nah <laughs> no because that's like that is a lot more but that just takes up like that's commitment like starting a, a font and uh, kudos to everyone who does it like I always whenever whenever someone releases a font how wow that's amazing I do not have the capacity to even get started because it is such an art and I love typography Um, and maybe that's also why I'm a bit like sh like ner like shy to make my own font because I like I would be so frustrated maybe with how <laughs> <laughs> like how basic my first font would be compared to like what's out there and what I appreciate. So I was like, I'm just gonna let them shine and buy their fonts and celebrate their craft, and I'm okay with that. I feel very happy in that position. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree, I agree. Um, if I look, eh, yeah, that's that's true. We do never never underestimate the logo, <laughs> Voodoo. That's right, because it is a very important part of of your brand. It's definitely not everything, because a lot of people think too that that logo design it's like the only thing you know and or that you need that's definitely not the case i like i personally do not offer a uh, packages that are only a uh, logo design i always it it always has has to come with the overarching identity and brand guidelines for me that's because that yeah. that's where like the actual most important thing in your brand comes but the logo plays a really really important part um And I, yes, of course. And I here are the fonts that are sh shortlisted for this project. I'm gonna leave it here for a while while we talk about packages and and branding for you guys to to see. I hope you guys can can see it well. 
Um, but yeah, do you, how about you, Joyce? Do you, uh, off, like, do you ever design just logos on its own? I know you probably go even farther the, where you don't design without strategy, which yeah. is something very interesting because she's, she's a total. It's just in the price. Yeah. <laughs> I think we complement each other really well here. Like you, you bring in the illustration side of it, and I, I really love the strategy side. That's like my happy place. Um, because I just like things linking up and meaning something, and like lasting as well. So it's not just like you look at it; it's pretty, you like it, and then there is nowhere to go from there but actually having something that like can grow and scale and continue to develop along with where the business is going and who people are about so i don't really offer so i i don't even give them the choice it's basically like this is the package price for branding um which includes a strategy and a roadmap and the local design and the style guide and all those things but um just because i know that in order for my process to work I need to sit down with them and find out what they're about. Um, it's basically just because otherwise we'll um, we'll be going in circles. I'll be wasting their time and vice versa because we all don't know what we're about. So if we do build that in, it's just kind of like taking it one step further than a brief. It's actually being like, is this brief right for you? Is it right for what you're after? Because sometimes you come with an idea and actually as the designer or as a studio, you're here to help them see the things that they can't see that's why they pay you <laughs> to do a service is because you contribute something new to the project so talking to it and like making sure that you're on the same page about what you're going to create is really important so I don't do what well, I I have helped friends in the past with a word mark or something for you know their business as a gift I don't do that through my business mm -hmm. I just do it as a Here we go, but no responsibility whatsoever where this is going to go or what's going to happen with it. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell anyone I did it. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, there you are. Um, or what I do for, because I do support um, small businesses, sometimes <laughs> they have a logo and like you just described, like they bought it off somewhere um, like you know, a pre-made mark or something like that, but they don't have anything around it. And so they're not ready to invest in a full brand identity yet. And they might, their business might not even have found its own flow enough yet to do that. So I kind of sometimes at my discretion offer glow up services where I just help them like tidy it up and like oh. put a, a fun system together for them and colors and just a bit of coaching like about their messaging and how they should go I uh, go about communicating about their brand and stuff but they're not yeah they're not branding projects they're like lend a hand kind of projects where I just come in and inject some expertise into where they're at in their journey and then further down the line when they're ready to book a proper rebrand then I'm here but there's no pressure obviously um But yeah, that's kind of how I solve it with like smaller businesses that I want to support. Oh, that's that's really nice. That's it. I knew you were perfect for him to help. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, this is bad. But <laughs> totally what I'm about. Oh, sorry. We're They're asking us, can you both share a, your portfolio here? Yes, of course. Uh, well, for mine, you can go to my website. It's onlychilddesign.com without with only one D between child and design and maybe voodoo can help me putting it down link and then for Joyce's um you can either go to joyceofalltrades.com or you can go to behance.com forward slash Joyce of all trades which I think is like also the button on the side like the avatar if you just click my face <laughs> you go straight there perfect 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 um I kind of like this, but I think it's going to way to California, you know, the, with, and that's what we were. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, this is too much. I love it. I mean, I love everything you do, but oh, um, I love everything you do too. <laughs> we're perfect match. Um, so let's see what I've got here. I think <laughs> that's why I'm like, because I'm the one who did the minimalist route. I think my head's still in that. So that's a danger. <laughs> Like when you... No, 
I I really think that we can um, go. I, I don't think it's a problem if we go the minimalist route for for um, for these because mm. we always have the identity to expand. So even if the low it's very minimal, yeah, we, like give it some some of the more organic luxury later on for yeah. sure. And the shapes definitely will feature. Um, that is kind of out of the question. I feel like you. I don't know. I can't see it now without the shapes. So, <laughs> no. um, let, oh, that's true. And it's telling me watch out for contrast. I know. I always have to do that. I should. Uh, that's that's a good a good tip. Watching out for contrast. Um, but yeah, this this was for for Peter, so he so he could see some color. <laughs> Yeah, that's the application, isn't it? <laughs> I'm actually doing something similar mm -hmm. to you. My, and yeah, shall we have a little switch around? Yes. We. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna go to Joyce's screen. For those of you who are just joining us. We're working on a um, the branding for a real client who's actually here in the chat joining us. Um, it's part of the Here to Help initiative where two designers join forces to help a business in need that has been affected by by COVID or by like, it, like I mean, what else? Like, I feel like everything's happening right now. So <laughs> any, any of the crazy stuff that's happening in the world today. Oh uh, but... It, that's that's our the show that we're on and today we're working on logo design tomorrow we will present to you guys brand guidelines and and work on some more assets but we're here with Joyce who's designing her logo let's see let's see you yeah so I'm just tidying in this so I just want to show something that I do when I get stuck for everyone who can relate to like you're halfway through developing a day and then you don't know what to do anymore um, and you're kind of lost in your shapes. What I do is I grab an image from the research that I feel really represents um, what that particular brand's about. And I start putting assets on the image because a lot of the time you'll end up doing layouts, you'll end up having type on imagery somehow, they're going to relate somehow. And I, I like it quite intuitively as well, because I, I look at the image, I, I remember what I'm trying to do, like the tone that I'm getting across and stuff. And then I can put my favorite graphics on there and see, does it work? If it doesn't work, it's likely that I've gone off track. So that's just like kind of palette cleanser that I do. So with this image, that's something that Daphne signed off that she really loved. So um, I'm just trying out those two fonts in a different way. So I'm bringing in her taglines and stuff. So I'm thinking about a type system to like bring in typography on top of things. And I want to bring in that, like I said, like I want to really go hard on that list thing um, to tell her story. So That's a really good advice using the image to to like remind you of where you're going yeah and it it kind of yeah it switches it up as well as soon as you see it on something else you, like you just said with the color you start reacting to it. it's like oh this is this works or this feels right or it doesn't feel right and it it really helps um sifting out the solutions you don't want so i'm still here with my asterisk <laughs> I'm kind of keen on this. People are loving that asterisk. So yeah, but do we have votes for it? Good. Okay. Should we keep going with that one? In the the asterisk. And let's see. So the other. So um, I've been like sitting on that friendly route. Um, I want to do the more fancy pants, <laughs> as I call it, the um the more aspirational. So I'm gonna switch out the font and see where we go with that. Um, I like this, but I'm wondering, I really like how the G and the B kind of connect. Um, I think that works really well, but okay, time to cut some type. <laughs> 
Also really fun how the G and the T sit together. So that's great. Um, I don't know how I feel about this negative space here because this is quite tight. So I might need to open this up to make it feel more balanced as a whole thing. That looks a bit more. No, it looks a bit too loose at the top and bottom. Yep. Okay. Mm, yeah, I don't want to really, I don't want to mess with the G too much because that's quite balanced as it is. I don't want really to get involved there. Um, right. Well, I'm going to fill around with that later. What I'll do is I'll take it as a rough and back to my posters. <laughs> I think that's where you can tell that I've come from a publishing background. Like, <laughs> um, I actually started design doing little flyers and stuff for like my my home church growing up. Um, that's literally how I got into design on Photoshop. I discovered Photoshop. Yep, I'm one of those. Um, and started on Photoshop, <laughs> and it, it it was super fun. And no one else was taking the opportunity, so it wasn't like it was like tiny for like. 50 people you know like it wasn't it wasn't a big deal but I was like no I'm gonna make it the best I can oh. and I like painted for it and I drew and I did loads of stuff so I feel like there's something homey about the poster it's like my, <laughs> my origin story and so I keep them how started design oh I I was really into drawing and then I discovered this guy called Spoon Graphics from the UK he did graphic design tutorials back when blogs were the only social media, you know? <laughs> and um, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. And so I started copying what he was doing and I must have been around, nah, I don't know, 12, 14. Oh yeah, tiny. So it was tiny. It was so cute. I, was like, I mean, none of that work well, I mean, holds up <laughs> at all, but. <laughs> Hey, everyone's got to start somewhere. Um, so let's just go. <laughs> oh, look at, that. look at that. I do like how Og sits with the um, art direction. It has a very elegant, so Og and Voyage. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't know if that's unfortunate. It's great for the foundry are very popular amongst designers. Mm -hmm. So I am concerned that it will look repetitive, like someone else has done it. But at the same time, there's a reason why they're popular. Um, and if it's relevant for the brief, mm -hmm. I still consider them. Um, Cause I don't want to, you know, I don't want to go overboard with like, no, I don't want to create something someone has like, done similarly to the, oh yeah we don't have an asterisk that's <laughs> um i'll just match it with a font that i think is similar from um adobe type just so i can get started on it if that makes sense mm -hmm. and then i can always fix it later so i'm not loving how harsh the g is here mm -hmm. that's too harsh for me um, but that's easily fixed. I think it's just really long and that's not, it's almost a bit too edgy then for Daphne, I think. So we're going to take that back. Oh, and this is, no, this is not good. <laughs> <laughs> so I shortened this. To... Another example of how we modify fonts for yeah. logos. And now it's still rough at this point. Like none of this is final. I feel, Lena, do you feel like once you have your root, it still takes like another day or two to like get the final, final files with like all the kerning and everything right? Or yeah, well, I usually what I do is I I will work on on something once I feel like it's it's good enough. I will send it to the client because I will send a presentation with various uh, logos, and then when the client decides which one they would they want to go with then I go like into the picture yeah. perfect. Um, yeah, thing. absolutely. Don't do it before they signed off because otherwise you're just wasting your time. <laughs> so I talking about presentations, we're going to we so what we're going to do 
today. So you guys have an idea of how this uh, quick, <laughs> quick rushed process is going. It's going to be, we're going to present Daphne, the, the logos that we, we end up with in this episode. So we're going to send her the logos and then she's going to tell us today at 2.30. So like in, in 30 minutes after the, after the live's done, she's going to tell us which one she, which one she likes. We're going to refine that and like do any changes we consider necessary and start putting on together some brand guidelines for her. And, and on tomorrow's episode, we're going to start implementing those. Well, you guys are going to get to see how the brand guidelines play off and then you and like you're going to see how they turn out but then you're going to see also how how we play with them and how we incorporate those brand guidelines into some more assets which um we might do some packaging or some mm. templates maybe you guys are going to see a little bit more of web we'll we'll see it's going to be let like us know <laughs> yeah let us know what you guys would like to see if there's anything that you would like to see this brand incorporated in, I think that that's gonna help us decide too. And and yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do that. We're gonna put in the presentation together, which um, I I can show you guys. Well, when, whenever you're done, I can show you guys really quick how mm. we put the presentation together. Um, but oh, you're doing. Yes, you because my yes, because my logo is so like my idea is very minimal. Not that doesn't mean it's like um, less value just because it's less of it. Um, I agree, but it's harder to understand how it's going to pan out. If that makes sense, when you have like a really like a shape lead logo then there's a lot there to look at and to decide and to talk about but when it's a minimalist logo it's more about the application um around it and i think that's where when you look around big brands at the moment um like in fashion and other places you notice that a lot of them are very stripped back and very minimal in their logo mark you know what i mean like loads of big brands i mean shout out brands you can think of like hermes and stuff like there's like it's one type face like it's one type mark and the location underneath or other stuff like that yeah there's some luxury brands that have got more shapes in them and stuff but a lot of the time they condense them down quite a lot and I think it's actually then less just the logo but it's a whole brand so brand isn't just logo right everyone always says that but it's so true like you have your art direction you have your messaging you have um their social impact strategies you know how like Daphne she wants to help artisans around the world because that's what she believes in and that's where she believes the best products are found so brand is all of that and it's not just the mark the mark just needs to make sure that it aligns with whatever is going on um so there's food for thought on that end um because I feel like sometimes design um clients want like everything in the logo like, you know, all the shapes, all the tone, all the vibe, all the messaging. And it's like, actually, um, brands are a lot more expansive these days. When we talk about branding, it's not just a logo form anymore. Even though a lot of work goes into it, it's a lot more than that. Um, and the more consistent and like aligned everything is, the more people will connect with it that are, well, their dream audience, at least like not everyone, but <laughs> um, I agree. but yeah. So I just want to drive that home just because that's why I like. So, but that's why I'm trying to like mock up what the site could look like. So my idea is that if we're going to go with this list thing, it has to be front and center when you come onto the website. So I'm just thinking like maybe um, when you hover on like, I think this will be a good or better product. The firm is, I believe. Oh, so pretty. A firm has... Oh, nice. Gorgeous. I, oh, I will buy everything from there if I could. Oh, um, but anyways, I love it. So let's say you're hovering and you're then the shapes come into play that Lena made. Um, when you hover, it could even be shapes. You know, it could be a circle. It could be half circle. It could move. It could alternate when you um, hover over better. It's a circle over good. It's an arch over a best. It's um, I don't know. what. What's the third one that you want? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
the triangle. Okay, triangle. So, yeah, so it could be that when you hover over it, the sing- symbol comes up, because that way people start connecting the dots between what means what, because you kind of int- introduce them to the brand world almost. And so, and also another thing I really like, and again with Classy, because she's going to have beautiful photos for those expensive products, because <laughs> even the baseline quality is still like above average and definitely not mass produced. So, um, so what we could do is like when you hover over better, like the feature product, the hero product of that section will pop up. Um, when you hover over best, immediately you get a sense of what's in the best section. So I'm thinking that'd be really great. Um, and have our tagline here and our, I mean, this, by the way, could, this is in a heavier, I think this is in a regular weight that could totally be, um, mm-hmm in the, in the uh, like a lighter weight and stuff we can totally change that um but that actually sorry that is the wrong direction this is like far too soft for where we are at okay. i love that website idea I, really- I think it'd be just like neat because again her strategy is making life easier and lesson from like reducing curating our input like everyone's talking about social media overwhelm and like you know being overloaded with input so for sure like here this way we want to have a really clean space where it just screams curation it's like it's like walking to an art gallery you know and everything's just laid out for you to um appreciate every piece of design that's on the site so that's kind of I thinking. love it. Ah, I'm getting excited. I hope Daphne is getting excited too about what she's gonna get. <laughs> And thank you so much for Sigrid that she's t- she's telling us that we did a great job. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, our our next step is gonna be to put in the presentation together for Daphne, and then well, I, I can show you guys really quick uh, what the presentation. Or actually, tomorrow we can show you what the presentation looked like. Um, actually, let me just show you really quick. Mm. We don't have anything, any content on it, but... Um, Shall we show your screen for that? Yeah, let's show my screen. I'm excited to see it. Basically, we're just going to put all of the logos. So we have a, um, always like our intro slide and then a little bit about the the brand and what we wanted to to reflect the direction and then we um we're gonna share the stylescape in there so that she always has that to to reference back and then we're gonna start with our with our concepts i'm not gonna put it together now because we only have four minutes left but um what we're gonna do is as soon as we get off the air Joyce and I will stay and we're going to we're going to put this presentation together. We find the logos that we both think are working the best and we're going to present probably about what do you say four concepts to to Daphne? Yeah, we probably have enough. <laughs> yeah, I usually three to four. presenting three to two four. I feel like going more than that it's a little too much for the client. Yeah. It makes it hard for them to 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 really get a grasp on, on the whole thing. So For sure. I'm going to put this together, send it to Daphne. She's going to give us some feedback. We're going to work on everything. And tomorrow, I I feel like packaging was winning in the chat. So yeah. we might we might have to do that tomorrow. And and yeah, and it's, it's going to be like it, tomorrow, you guys are going to see how this all is taking shape because we're going to be able to to show you guys a, a better dire- craft of the direction so it's gonna be it's gonna be really fun don't forget guys go follow joyce go follow me so you guys can all keep track with what we're doing we always post the um, the projects at the end it does usually take about a week or so to refine w- once we're done so you guys are gonna get to see the final final result on our Instagram accounts. So if you guys want to see how this all comes out, go follow us. Also, if you know anyone, any either an entrepreneur or a small business 
that has been affected by by the recent turn of events um, get them to apply to here to help we're having our next episode soon so um, I have a link on my bio if you guys want to go there and and just share it with people that you might think would need the help um, what else if you guys have any designer that you would like to see on here to help also DM me let me know I, I would love to hear your your recommendations too. And then yeah, I guess like tomorrow we're we're gonna have a long night. Well, Joyce, you're you're like nine hours ahead. Joyce is tuning in from London. I'm in California, so you do you do have a couple more hours. <laughs> we'll make it fast. <laughs> oh man. Oh, I'm trying to like. Okay, guys, we're gonna go work some more, but come tomorrow. Come tomorrow and, and check out what we what we come up with this afternoon, and then we're con we'll continue working on the direction. Tomorrow it's gonna be really fun and nerve wracking for us. <laughs> Thank you so much, Joyce, again for for joining us and here to help. It's been a wonderful pleasure working with you. And, and, and I learned so much from you these two weeks. Thank you, thank you. Oh, thanks so much for having me. Thanks for everyone tuning in. And for all the tips, I'm gonna go through the chat and like read the suggestions <laughs> and like add them to my logos and stuff. I wasn't able to like see them in real time. <laughs> yeah, thanks guys. Have an awesome night, day, wherever you guys are. And, and hopefully you guys continue tomorrow to see what we do. Yeah, let's see what she picks. <laughs> Thank you.